<laughs> two beds. There's two beds here in Rheimdall. You thought I'd forget. <laughs> no, I never forget my bits. <laughs> Anyway, hello there, friends, and welcome back to more Bravely Default 2. Last time, we spent a lot of our personal time in Holograd, seeing how things were after the war had settled down. Unfortunately, it seems like there was a lot more destruction and things we needed to take care of in Holograd than the other city-states, which is kind of unfortunate, but I guess that's what it means to be the invading nation. Um... Either way, we were able to help out, at least as much as we could. Thankfully, they aren't hostile to us anymore. And we were also able to sort of get a little bit of closure on Lonsdale's story, which was very, very nice to see. Now, today, we are back here in Rheimdahl, as you can see. And we're going to be clearing up the remaining major side quests I wanted to tackle for uh, during this uh, large spree of, <laughs> of episodes. There's really not going to be any, if there's going to be, there's going to be very little. There will be very little fighting this episode. It's going to be a lot of dialogue. So if that's something that disinterests you, then I would suggest you click off now. Though, while I just said that, there's some pretty important story beats that are going to be discussed this episode, and uh, some very valuable items that you want to make sure to grate your hands on. So, we're going to be starting here today in Rheindahl, talking to our old buddy here, Galahad, who's here for some reason. Hey, we met you in Wiswald. Oh, it's you. Thanks again for all your help. Ah, it's good to see you, Galahad. Fancy meeting like this, eh? Yes, it's quite a coincidence. I only just got here myself. What brings you to Rheindahl? I've come to see my sister. I was born here, see? The Wiswalders took me in when I was little. But this is my real home. So you and your sister were living apart all these years? Afraid so. We've only seen each other a few times since we were kids. So I thought, since Wiswald's pretty much back on its feet again now, maybe it's a good time to come and visit. I'm sure she'll be happy to see you. Oh, she will. I can't wait to see the look on her face when I surprise her. Anyway, I'll introduce you once I've found her and said hello. Come by the Hall of High Holies when you've got a minute. She told me once that's where she spends most of her time. Hey, Galahad has a sister. A time to forgive. It's been a long time since I saw my sister, so I came to Rheimdahl to catch up with her. Come by the Hall of High Holies when you've got a minute and I'll introduce you. We get a mark. We get four Mark of the Voids. Those are a very unique item that will remove EXP gain, which is... Which sounds weird on paper, but is going to be something that I probably end up taking advantage of in this series, because I kind of, like, have a hard stop on where I want to be in terms of levels before we finish up the game, and we are very quickly approaching that. So, that'll probably be an item I use. Oh. Hey, Martha. What are you doing here? Hmm? Oh, I just had some business to attend to is all. What about you? What brings you lot by here? We came to meet someone. Do you know a big guy named Galahad? Oh... But if it's Galahad you're looking for, he's gone to see the graves outside town. The graves? Yeah. His... his sister's buried there. Gladys. Wait, Gladys was Galahad's sister? Oh, sorry, I, I thought he might have mentioned it at some point. Their parents were both priests. They died when Gladys and Galahad were only little. Galahad was sent away to live with relatives in Wiswold and Gladys stayed here. That must have been tough. Yeah, and now Gladys is gone too, and, well, I didn't have much choice but to tell him, but, oh, it was awful. The second I said it, he just burst into tears right there in front of everyone. Wow. I hope he's okay. Me too. We should go and check on him. If you want to know where the grave sites are... They're back behind the Hall of High Holies. We've only been here a few times, but they were here all along. Oh, Gladys. Gladys. If only I'd come home sooner. Galahad. Martha told me everything. 
how Gladys threw her life away because she felt so bad about what she'd done. How she was all alone, tortured by guilt, with no one there to help her. <sighs> Sorry. C can you leave me alone for a bit? We... We know you want to be by yourself right now, but... We were worried about... Go away, I said. Leave me alone. I guess nothing we say is gonna help when he's feeling like that. Yeah, probably not. <sighs> Those who lost family to the judgments might not be able to forgive Gladys for what she did. But she helped people too, when Holograd invaded. Perhaps if we spoke with those she helped, we might learn something that would be of comfort to Galahad. Yeah, it's worth a try, at least. Oh, Gladys. Gladys! I'm so sorry I left you all alone. Well, let's give him the time here to mourn. Let's go see what people think about Gladys. I think I'll save my opinions about her until we are finished this uh, uh, side quest. First person up. Gladys was the one who dragged my wife off so they could put her on trial as a fairy. All because she missed one stupid town meeting. I told them she was sick, but no one would listen. They said the fact she couldn't face them all proved she was a fairy. I mean, I know Gladys was only doing what Helio told her, but is that really an excuse? Doesn't matter now, though. She got her just desserts. Next person can be found up at the very top here, Father Ridian. Gladys and Galahad's parents were both priests. Very good priests. But then they got dragged into all the fuss over the fairies and the judgments and... Well, Gladys came to see it as the fairies' fault. With the help of Helio's honeyed words, of course. She can't be blamed for what she did. And bitterness and grudge-bearing will only bring us more pain. They certainly won't bring my Margaret back. The next person can be found in the Plaza Square. Gladys? Oh, scared stiff of her I was. But she certainly saved our bacon back when the Hologradus came. She stood there and faced a lot of them down, all on her own. And if she hadn't, I wouldn't be standing here today. I... Uh, I hope she's at peace now, even after everything she did. After all, we might not have a home to speak of if it weren't for her. And lastly, at the front gate, is Martha. Gladys was sorry for what she did, more than we can ever know. I grew up with her. I know what she was like deep down. That's what makes it so... so sad. Just as she realized how wrong she'd been, just as she was about to start making amends, she had to go and... I understand how Galahad feels. I still can't quite believe it myself. There's so much I still want to talk to her about. So many things I want to ask her. I put flowers on her grave once in a while. Stop by for a little chat, you know? But gravestones don't talk back, do they? I... I was just so... Oh, sorry. Well, not everyone has fond memories of Gladys, that's for certain. No, but some of them weren't so bad. Some people even seemed a little sorry she's gone. Indeed. It may be small comfort to Galahad, but I think we should go and tell him what we've learned, don't you? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe it'll help Gladys rest a little easier, too. Hey, Galahad. I thought I told you to leave me alone. Aye, but if we leave you alone much longer, you'll freeze to death out here. And so are if I do. It's not like I've got much left to live for. I let my sister die all alone with a whole town hating her. I'm sorry, Galahad. I can't imagine how you must feel. But please, look. Gladys, 
I'm only alive today because you stood up for us. I... I hope you're sleeping peacefully. I could never hate you, Gladys. No matter what you did. I hope you know that. You're the one whose wife was... Carted off to her death by Gladys. Yes. Yes, I am. And if she'd only stopped to listen to our side of the story, things might have turned out differently. Lord knows I've hated her for that. Hated and hated. Ah. But what good does hating do? Doesn't make you feel any better, that's for certain. I can carry on banging my head against that brick wall, but all it'll get me is a sore head. So I've come here to pray. To pray that you find your way to... wherever it is you're going. Gladys' sins were many. Of that there is no doubt. But by the end, she had recognized them, and she had begun to make amends. Who are we to judge one brave enough to take the first steps on the road to redemption? And what does such judgment gain us? Little in the end, save to delay the healing of a wound. If we are to move forward, to heal, then we must choose forgiveness. Wait, look. There's something written on our headstone. Hmm? Listen to this. Here lies one who died, that the many might live. I. It was not I who asked that this inscription be made. It was the people of the town. Gladys was a hero, and that's how she'll be remembered. So you... you don't all hate her? I thought she'd been thrown in a hole out here and left to rot. Look around you, Galahad. This is no place of dishonor. This is where our most cherished are laid to rest. Your own parents among them. I don't think they'd bury someone they hated out here. No, I... I suppose not. Oh, Gladys. I'm sorry to have been such a bother. I guess you're going home to Wiswald now? I am. There's things I need to be getting back to. I see. And Gladys would have my guts for garters if I went and neglected my duties. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> she always was a handful. <laughs> anyway, I'll be getting on. Maybe see you again if you're ever in Wiswald. I'd like that. Look after yourself, Galahad. Oh, party chat time. And then we'll talk about Gladys. Gladys and Galahad. Galahad really loved his sister, huh? Yes, it must have it must have hurt him awfully to lose her, especially under such circumstances. We must try not to let ourselves get too upset, though. Yeah, I don't think Galahad would want that. Seems like he's going to try and get on with his life. We should try to do the same. Seeing the big man break down like that, though. That was... He's usually so... composed. I'd never seen ever seen him laugh before, let alone cry. But even he couldn't stand Faram in the face of losing someone he loved. And who could blame him? At least it's good to know there's a heart in the barrel chest of his. You know, you can cry too, right, Elvis? Anytime you need to. Thanks. I might just take you up on that one of these days. Just don't get tear stains on my stuff, okay? <laughs> As if I'd ever dream of it. Oh well, that's rather that's rather ruined at the moment. Still, I think we made some progress. Yeah, and maybe the mood needed lightening a little. Come on. Well, I'm gonna bring it down again. Oh hey, Siren's helping us out. Let's go ahead and talk about Gladys. And my opinion on her. I think she is very similar to Bernard in that she represents one of the big messages that this game has for its players and whatnot, and that people aren't or shouldn't be categorized into black and white. People are people, and they will. people always do a mix of good and bad. For every good thing they do, there's always going to be something that happens that's bad. Gladys was someone who was manipulated by Helio and was... Absolutely, in the middle of the 
fear and fanaticism and terror that was the whole Judgments of the Fairies fiasco in Rheimdahl. In fact, she was the one officiating a lot of those executions. Of course, she was in the direct middle of that. And it caused an innumerable amount of suffering for these people. But on the flip side, she was a caring and loving loving sister, and she came directly to Rheimdahl's aid to fight back against the Hologratters, and she even retrieved the Fire Crystal for us, even though it cost her her life. In the end, she did a lot of good, and an innumerable amount of bad. And it just shows that she was someone that can't really be categorized into good or evil, and people are free to make their own opinions up about her. It's something that is similar with Bernard, where he's shown to do a lot of good things, but he's also just generally considered to be a bad person regardless of that, and that's something that this game does not shy away from telling us. Now, that is not to say that I like Gladys a lot. I still think that she's kind of a silly character that, while she does help push this game's narrative of, you know, not putting people into black and white, it's... Uh, the way that she dies is a little silly, and I do wish we got at least a little bit more time with her trying to redeem herself before she went down. Personally speaking, if she was going to die in combat, I kind of wish she died in the invasion against Holograd with every with the united front whenever we were trying to get behind enemy lines and that's where she would have died but i don't know i i wish we had a little bit more time with her to just sort of see that dichotomy rather than having it stuck to this side quest or in bernard's case a memory from elvis's book all in all, though, she's not a bad character, far from my favorite, though, and this side quest is pretty alright. It's glad to see we finally get some closure on Gladys, and get to see a little bit more of Galahad, since outside of the Wizard quests, this is really all we get of him. Anyways, speaking of Wizwald, let's go there next. Okay, here in Wizwald, we actually have two quests we want to complete, and the first one is here with our good old pal, Roddy. Hey, Roddy. What are you doing? Oh, don't tell me you're tidying up the mess for Gentile made all by yourself. And why shouldn't I be? I have to lead by example, have I not? Working yourself into an early grave's no example to be setting. What would Lily say, eh? Ah, volunteering to help, are we, Elvis? Very kind of you. Many hands make light work and all that. Wait, I never... Ah, me and my big mouth. Come on, surely you're not planning on leaving an old pal in the lurch? Ah, uh, fine. Let's get to it, shall we? This takes me back. We did a lot of tidying up after folks once upon a time, eh? After Lady Emma, you mean? Aye. She just couldn't turn the challenger down. Insisted in giving every two-bit wizard who rolled into town a shot at the title. That she did. And it was always us who had to pick up the pieces afterwards. Ah, great days. <laughs> and here we are doing it again. We never learn, do we? On the contrary, old pal. This is about not forgetting where we came from. There, all done. As near as damn it anyway. It'll do for starters. Now, I owe you something to say thanks. Ho <laughs> ho! The drinks are on Roddy, eh? Lead on, big man. <laughs> I think I can do a little better than that. And what exactly am I supposed to do with a ratty old bit of wall dash? You'll not be doing anything with it. I'm going to use it to make you a wand that'll help you out there on your travels. You are, eh? I care a friend indeed, Roddy. All that for little old me? No, don't get too excited just yet. I'll be needing you to gather the rest of the ingredients first. You what now? Oh, wipe that look off your face. It's just a few simple bits and bobs, that's all. First, I'll need some meadow mist. It's a plant that grows over towards Halcyonia. Then we'll be needing some cactus milk. You can find that in Savalon or thereabouts. And last but not least, a chunk of moonstone ice. Rheindal's your go-to spot for that. A few simple bits? 
We'll have to traipse halfway around the world for that little lot. Aye, that you will. And it'll be more than worth your while, believe me. <sighs> Fine. If you reckon this wand of yours is so special, I suppose we can give it a go. I knew you'd come round soon enough. Right, I'll carry on putting things back in order here. You come and find me when you've got the goods. Keep your feet on the ground. I can use uh, that bit of wall dash to make you a wand that'll help you on your travels, but I'll need some metal mist from Halcyonia, cactus milk from Savalon, and moonstone ice from Brindal too. We got a divine rod, another very useful item. Now, while I will have to do all of this manually, you guys have the power of editing that I'll be doing, and uh, this will take no time at all. The Metal Mist can be found right next to the abandoned house. This guy right here has a side quest, but we're not going to be doing that. Woo! I totally knew I missed that one. Absolutely. Where are you? Where are you? That's a headband. Oh, I have to interact with it. I'm stupid. There we go. Metal Mist. Okay. The cactus milk can be found right next to where we helped out Truff getting his schnitzel. And lastly, the moonstone ice can be found right next to the serpent's grotto. Back to good old Roddy. We got your stuff. Ah, there you are. Sorry, you probably had a right old nightmare hunting down that little lot, didn't you? Nightmare my foot, you patronizing old goat, you. Could have done it in half the time if we'd wanted. That's the spirit. Right, let's get started, shall we? Do you remember when Vigintio first came to town? <laughs> How could I forget? I've not seen a head that inflated before or since. And he didn't let up with his big talk, even in front of Lady Emma. I knew it was going to be a set too to remember. Aye. Let us see once and for all who is the greatest sorcerer in the land, or whatever nonsense he was spouting. Not that she was the slightest bit impressed. He put on a heck of a show though. Gave her a proper run for her money if I remember rightly. But she came through in the end. Pig-headed so-and-so wouldn't take no for an answer though, would he? Kept on coming back for more. Aye. I don't know about greatest sorcerer in the land, but he certainly had the thickest skin. Why was he so obsessed with winning anyway? Still puzzles me even now. The book! Look, it, it's... Lady Emma's funeral. Oh, the Pope! Oh, people of Wizwald! So sad at Lady Emma's passing, traipsing through the streets in pathetic tribute. <laughs> finally, finally, I've won. Finally, I have defeated the stubborn old witch. She couldn't outwit death, but I could. <laughs> And I didn't just outwit it, I outdid it, surpassed it, became the mighty white. I have proven I am better than her. I win. I win. And now I stand as the undisputed wizarding champion. Of the world! Oh, it hurts! <laughs> but the fear of pain, the fear of death itself, I have overcome them both! I have beaten them! I have won! I have become the almighty! Mighty White! I may have lost to her more than once, but only just. Every time, only just. So in a way, I mostly won every single time. And now I have 
the power. Power over fear. Power over death. The mighty white wins the day once and for all. Indisputably. <laughs> Perhaps I should try to calm down a little. Wait. No. What is that? Who are you? Who else revels in the passing of the cursed witch? Wait. You're, you're congratulating me? Celebrating my moment? Mantis victory! <laughs> Good! Yes, praise me! Bow before me! I am the greatest in the world! <laughs> it hurts! Hurts so Good. Ah, ah, give me more, more. Ah, my wounds will commemorate my victory. Ah, they will mark me as the greatest wizard of them all. Ah, more, more, more. So he was here. He came to watch the procession. Not just to watch it, to celebrate it. He was even more twisted than we knew. How could he possibly think of that as winning? Time to pop the wall dash in. All done. Here you go, old pal. A wand imbued with a power to take down a mighty white, no less. Not to mention all the extra oomph from the other ingredients I had you gather. Well, I'll certainly not be saying no to a gift like that. Good. Just remember, don't let the power mess with your mind. If you do, you'll soon end up like Vigintio. Keep your feet on the ground and your head out of the clouds. Lady Emma's old catchphrase, eh? <laughs> Aye. I'll be sure not to let myself get carried away. Got ourselves a divine rod. For every Gladys and Bernard that I talk about, there is a Vigintio. Someone that's... As much as we would like to try and find something redeemable to talk about with them, they just keep proving us wrong. Every. Single. Time. Vigintio... Without finding a better way to phrase this, is a spiteful asshole who literally cheated death to try and find some way to upend Lady Emma in any way he could. That is genuine hatred, and there is nothing we can find that can be possibly seen as a redeeming quality about him. There are just those people in the world. As much as we would like to find something good about them, we just can't. And I don't think that contradicts the, the message I was talking about earlier, either. Where, you know, there is... you shouldn't try to place people in black or white. But sometimes, they'll just place it themselves. It's just how it is. Between life and death. All that mighty white stuff's got me wondering. What must it feel like, not being able to die? It's not quite not being able to die, exactly. It's more like... You're dead, but you're still conscious. Your heart stopped beating, your body's cold, you can't taste anything. Not that you need to eat. That sounds like no fun at all. Hard to believe someone would go through all of that, even if it was to just avoid dying. Aye, the fear of the end's a powerful thing. But becoming undead doesn't mean you avoid your death. It makes it last forever. And despite knowing this, he still chose to become what he became. I guess he really, really wanted to get one over on Lady Emma. 
He thought that he was the greatest wizard of all time, and the fact that she was more famous and better respected, well, it obviously sent him a bit mad. Then of course she killed him, which really can't have made him like her anymore. So he did all that just to get back at someone. Aye, vanity's a dangerous thing. Sure was for Virgintio. Jealousy and hatred will consume a person and destroy them in the end. Let's hope he's finally free of all that now at least. Well, those were two pretty gloomy stories, both having very different endings. Let's go ahead and check out that new rod that we got. Um, just so you know, we just got a second Divine Rod. Very good item, I've already talked about it. Uh, but yeah, we have now a second one, so we can dual wield this and get a big boost to our light damage if we so wish. Uh, so thanks, Roddy. That's a pretty good rod, I'll take it. But there are two more side quests that I want to cover today, and no, it will not be that one outside of Halcyonia. The first one is Gjern Wiswald. Thankfully, the next two quests that we're going to be covering are a little bit uh, happier in topic, so uh, we can close that today in a good way. Hey there, Elvis. Aha! Just the man I was looking for. Are you going out somewhere? Yep. And I was about to come and find you and ask if you wanted to tag along. Oh, cool. Um, what's that you got there? <laughs> Nothing gets past you, eh? This, my friend, is the finest drop you'll have drunk in a long while. And I know just the place to enjoy it. Up in the branches of the great tree there, with the lights of the town stretched out beneath us. Be it spending the evening alone in my room, I guess. All righty then, it's decided. Now come and join me when you're ready, eh? I'm off to make a start while the night's still young. Hey, a drinking party with Elvis. Trees a crowd. I've got a hold of the finest drop you've drunk in a long while. But say we enjoy it up in the branches of the great tree with the lights beneath, uh, with, with the lights of the town laid up beneath us. We get a fairy glow charm. We have to do this at night time so that the lights are actually out. Fairy glow charm is a very good item. We want that. And hell yeah, I'll take a drinking party with Elvis. Let's go. Sorry, Gloria. Uh... Well, I mean, I guess she would be able to drink in a lot of other countries. But in the United States, she's 20 years old, so she would not be uh, legally allowed to drink. So sorry, you gotta sit this one out. It's so pretty. You can see the whole town from up here. That you can. This is my favorite spot in all of Wiswold. The old place has changed quite a bit since we set out on our travels, though, eh? You've changed quite a bit too, you know. Me? Well, I'm just the same old Elvis, am I not? Nope. You're different. Maybe you don't see it, but you are. Hmm. Better not interrupt. When I first met you, I thought you were just some weirdo. Me weird? <laughs> That's rich coming from you. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I deserve that. I'm still trying to get my head around the fact that you're a fairy. Look, I'm sorry about that, okay? I didn't mean to keep it from you for so long. But I just... It never seemed like the right time, you know? And maybe I... Still didn't trust you enough. Sorry. Ha! <laughs> what's with all the apologies all of a sudden? And anyway, what's wrong with a young lady having a secret or two up her sleeve? Young lady? <laughs> you know I'm like five times your age, right? <laughs> there you go. Sweating the details. What I always tell you. It doesn't change anything, does it? You being a fairy, I mean. We're all still friends, right? Of course. Without you guys, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Aye. We're never so weak as when we stand alone, eh? <sighs> Just look at it. There's a whole world out there. What's one solitary person in the face of all that? Makes you realize how insignificant you are in the scheme of things, doesn't it? Just so you know, I'm not a fan of moody drinkers. You're right, though. It's a big old world. And on our own, we're nothing. But... All you have to do is get up and put yourself out there. Right? Sure, it's a big, wide, scary world. 
but that's what makes it so amazing when you meet someone. <laughs> I suppose you're right. You know I am. Wow. I never realized. What? Fairies leave a sort of glowing trail when they fly about the place, eh? Huh? Oh, this? Yeah, I guess it's kind of cool. Someone told me what it was once, but I forgot. Something about magical residue or something? Magical residue? Have an idea. Fly around a bit more for me, will you? Uh, okay. Bingo! There we go. What's that? That residue of yours, I, I sort of condensed it into a little talisman -y thing. Wow, it's pretty. Can I have it? <laughs> no need to ask, it was yours in the first place. Thanks. I'll keep it somewhere safe. <sighs> I'm flagging, you know. Shall we head back? Not yet. I want to take in the view a little longer. Fine by me. Drink it in, kiddo. I'm not going anywhere. It really is beautiful. Yep. <laughs> Think I missed my window. I'll just head back to the inn. <laughs> a very fine morning to you, good sir. You seem pretty chipper. And why wouldn't I be, eh? Oh, almost forgot. You were supposed to come and meet me last night. Where did you get to? Um, well, I thought it was best for me not to intrude. Intrude? What are you on about? In intrude on what? You missed out on a fine view and an even finer tipple, you know. I, uh, I think I can live with that. Eh? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> You're a funny one sometimes, you know? I agree with Seth. That was absolutely worth it. Let's read this party chat. Precious memories. We got through the whole bottle while we were sitting on that tree, you know? That we did, I. And why not? I thought you were saving it for a special occasion. That's what you told me, anyway. Did I really say that? Hey, <laughs> me and my memory. But, look, a decent drop's not hard to come by if you put your mind to it. We'll get some more, don't you worry. Precious memories with- precious moments with your pals, though. Those, you've really got a treasure. And if they happen to evolve, involve drinking a whole bottle of the good stuff, then so be it. I've certainly got no regrets. Okay, if you say so. Just don't come crying to me about what a waste it was next time you're thirsty. A waste? Did it ever cross your mind that the special occasion I had to and had in mind might have been the very night we actually drank it? And it was special, right? You even got a wee memento to show for it. The talisman? Aye, and now every time you look at it, the taste of that special bottle will come floating back. That's what you wanted me to remember? Oh, why do I even bother? <laughs> I love those two so much. Uh, it's nice to see these characters getting their own moments with each other. Let's go and take a look at that charm that Elvis had made. Uh, Fairy Glow Charm. A charm made from the magical residue that fairies leave behind when they fly. Equ when equipped, MP consumption reduced by 25%. As you can probably tell, that is the exact same effect as the gold hairpin. These stack, by the way. These effects will stack. It is a very, very, very good accessory that also just has a lot of extra bonuses tied to it. A very good accessory that you can only get one of every playthrough. So, make sure you grab it. And we're going to be leaving off today in Halcyonia. Elvis and Adele had their nice night of drinking and merriment and making charms out of magical residue. What about good old Gloria and Seth? Are you heading out somewhere? Yes. I thought I might go for a walk to try and clear my mind. Good idea. Should be nice with the sea so close by. The sea? Yes. Perhaps a stroll along the beach would be nice. W would you like to come with me? Uh, sure. Why not? 
The sound of the sea. I thought I might go for a walk to try and clear my mind. Perhaps a stroll by the sea would be nice. Would you care to join me? We get a wave song necklace for this. Let's go and say hi to the ocean. It's where our journey started anyway, so it'll be nice to kind of come full circle. This is right about where you found me, huh? It's so strange. It wasn't all that long ago, and yet it feels like a lifetime. Well, we've been through a lot since then, I guess. Yes. So much has happened. This might be the longest journey I've ever been on. Longer than any of my sea voyages, even. I've seen so much since we set out. But I wouldn't have seen any of it if you hadn't found me when you did. The wind crystal just started glowing all of a sudden. We followed it to where the glow was brightest, and there you were. I wonder if the crystal had already chosen you by that point. Could be. But that wasn't what made me stick with you guys. I chose to do that myself. Do you... have any regrets? <laughs> Are you kidding? No way! I wound up with the best bunch of friends anybody could hope to have. Yes. Of course. <laughs> Your hometown is somewhere on the other side of this sea, isn't it? What kind of place is it? Oh, it, it's nothing much. Just a little village miles from anywhere. The fishermen go out fishing, the fishwives stay at home. And the kids? Well, they go shell collecting, crab hunting, swimming in the sea. It sounds lovely and peaceful. Yeah, I, I guess it is. Yeah. I hope you find your way back there one day. Me too. Someday. But not yet. There's still stuff we have to do. <laughs> I don't want our journey to end yet, either. There are so many things out there that we have yet to see. And if we want to see them, we have to keep on going. Yeah. Think of how much there is we still haven't explored. I can't hope to explore it all, of course. I am still a princess of Musa. I have responsibilities. Duties. Uh, sure, but what's to stop you from doing both? What do you mean? Well, you can do your duties while traveling, can't you? I... Never mind. If we start talking about all the things I would dearly love to do, we shall be here all day. Nothing wrong with that. It's better to want to do tons of stuff than nothing. <laughs> what else is there to get you out of bed in the morning? Come on, tell me about some of the other things you want to do. I, uh... Really? <laughs> All right. I, uh... I want to... Well, for one thing, the list of books I want to read is almost endless. And I'd love to try my hand at cooking some of the delicious food we've eaten on our travels. Oh, and it would be wonderful to be able to fly on Gwillem's back again, and gaze down at the world below and... Then let's do it. Let's do it all. What's stopping us? I'd also love to... well... to visit your hometown. You would? Uh, sure, why not? We'll all go. <sighs> What's so funny? Oh, it's just that, well, talking about my hopes and dreams like this, it's something I would never have dared to do before I met you all. In fact, I would never have dared to even have hopes and dreams. My duties as a princess were all I ever thought of. All I ever felt I could think of. Well, you have a strong sense of responsibility. That's more than can be said for most. No, I... I was mistaken. Listen, the sound of the waves. Can you hear it? I couldn't. When we came here before, I couldn't hear it at all. No, I... I could hear it, of course, but... I wasn't listening. 
And how can someone incapable of truly listening ever hope to rule a kingdom? I guess having a few friends around has done you good, huh? It helps to share your burdens sometimes. Yes. Yes, it truly does. It's such a lovely sound. I feel so calm listening to it. And I'm so glad I can finally hear it. You have friends now, Gloria. You don't have to bear the weight alone. And I won't. I promise. Now, shall we head back into town? Sure. What's this? A shell? That gives me an idea. Hey, Gloria. I got something for you. A seashell? Yeah. I found it on the beach. Hold it up to your ear. Why ever would I... Uh, like this? Oh! I can... I can hear... waves. <laughs> you said that sound helped you to feel calm, right? Well, now you can take it with you wherever you go. It... it's like I'm back at the seaside. But, uh, I, I guess you don't want to be carrying that stupid thing everywhere, right? <laughs> oh, but I do. In fact, how about... there? Huh. A necklace, huh? Yes. Do you like it? It's perfect. <laughs> then I shall wear it with pride. The Sound of the Sea Listening to the Sound of the Sea again, Gloria? Yes, it's like waves crashing onto a beach. So calming. The oceans always helped me to relax, too. I used to spend hours just gazing out at the horizon. I wonder what it is that makes it have that effect. Well, people back home believe that we came from the sea. Our ancestors did, I mean, way back. From the sea? You mean... Across the sea? From another continent? No, like, actually in the sea. That's... that They say that's where the human race was born. Which would make the ocean kind of like our mother, I guess. It's fascinating. It was a big deal when I was a kid. The grown-ups were always telling us to treat her with respect, to give thanks for her blessings and all that stuff. The sea is our mother. Yes, I could see that. There's something so comfortable and familiar about the sound the shell makes. Almost like being wrapped in a warm embrace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People who didn't grow up near the ocean usually don't get it. But I guess you're different. Once again, very nice to see them coming together to have unique dialogue and get to exchange words. It's nice to know that Gloria has ambitions other than just being a princess as well. But one thing is for certain, we do have a duty to carry out. Next time on Bravely Default 2, we begin our journey towards Musa, the once bright realm. So, with that said, I'll see you soon.